You just hang on, bro. So I'll just show them around here. I'll show them around there. I will go down first. Just hang on, Paso. I'll watch you in the video. Don't take off. It's a really cool spot that we're in. I'll show you why. Yeah, I'm the other side, possibly. Hang on. Come up here. Possibly be hunting this moose everywhere here. See this trail? This old skid trail. And we've been following it behind us, coming this way, right? And this is an area that is selectively looked. So they take out big trees only and leave the bulk. Just so you know, this is not total devastation in these zones and I like hiking here because uh, it opens it up a bit the moose hang in here and it's pretty nice and it's not so hard on the psyche when you come into clear-cut zones hard on the system mentally emotionally physically everything but here it's pretty nice so I'll just sit up here with Paso and I got Kai with me talk to you a bit here come here Paso Come up here. Yeah, this is great. Where's my boy? <laughs> oh, be there, okay. There's my big fella. Jesus. This is my good boy, Apostle. I got the big fella, Apostle, Big Daddy Apostle, up with me today. I went and got him from Wendy's a couple days ago, and he's happy to be up here with me hunting. He's a rock star up here. Now, uh, he was breeding for quite some time over there. There was a lot of females in heat. He lost a fair bit of weight. They don't eat these males when they're breeding. So uh, I'll get him fattened up. And uh, he's just blowing his winter co uh, his fall coat now for winter, so that's the other thing. D just a quick note on that aspect. Don't brush till you go crazy. If it don't come out, leave it a week and it'll pop out. Just brush nice so that it comes out. The fall coat, you don't need to work hard because it's not much. Just if it's not ready yet, don't take it. Just leave it and give it a week. And then uh, increase the fish so that uh, the coat's nice and oily and it, it just comes out nice. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, preservation series again. Um, you all know the situations that are coming. I don't need to cover those. And you know that my primary um, area of expertise is in instinctive behavior in dogs. And out of all breeders, there's only limited amounts, 1% of the breeders that are really skilled in instinctive behaviors of dogs that would give you any assistance in what's coming in preservation without training. Hardly nobody's a dog trainer. And bottom line is, you want a dog that's instinctive, not trained for the situations that are coming. And you need such a versatile dog. Now, you also got to buy from a guy that has got some skills in the whole scenario from gatekeeping, from having friendly little dogs with families, to going in public, to not going in public, to guarding the gate, to riding in the truck shotgun, to living in the wild up, up here and, and keeping things in order and helping you survive. you got to have somebody that knows all the seasons because this could drag out a while. And I'm, you can go on my channel and see me hiking for many, many seasons, every season. And rain or shine, snow, sleet, hail, don't make a bit of difference. We're out in it. And this breed of dog and that one behind me, Dale comes, 
they're ideal for this kind of uh, situation that's coming. Now, this particular breed, of course, has the shortest time frame of all the instinct rich dogs that the breeders have focused a little bit to try and uh, get the protection instinct dulled down. But in my lines, it's not dulled down, right? So uh, we went specifically to the Northern Karelian District where they are remote breeders. They're, they're still believing that the dog should have the capability to look after the handler in every situation, not just bear, not just game, not just wild, but two-legged. And uh, what we're worried about in the yards these days and in the vehicles these days is car jacking, home invasions, theft, breaking in the gates, all those things. But it can definitely go even worse where we've got to literally get out of the riots, the chaos, the, chaos, the stuff that's coming and pull the pin and head up for a while. Maybe you got to take two weeks to get the heck out of town. Uh, you got to leave the property. Maybe you can't hunker down. Maybe there's just too many coming at you. Maybe you got to grab the go bag and go. Well, these particular dogs you see are the ideal. Now, no word of lie, I can get up here in two and a half hours and there isn't a single person that would know where I am. They would never know where I am. They would never know how to find me. And the only way they could spot me is if, I, if they used a drone, but these dogs hate drones. I've got them so they hate drones. And they let me know when they're coming. And we can get under bush right away. We can get under the canopies. And that's the beauty of hiking tall timber and training your dogs in tall timber. Because you get under the canopies and they can't see down. And this, they'll see you in this zone, of course, and you sure wouldn't have this on. But um, when we get just, just a little bit up there, they can't see nothing. And there's no way they could track in there. And these dogs blend. They're just... They're just camo dogs. And so you can literally disappear up here and be quite content. And if you got to pull the pin for a few weeks and you want to come up here, uh, a piece of cake to do with these guys, right? This is their whole heritage is, is this zone. You want to get them into the wilderness. And uh, I highly recommend that... Um, when you're looking at dogs for what's coming, you've got to look at dogs that are capable in a wide range of areas and you don't have to train them. Uh, you can't take a dog that's not bred for this bush, bring him up here and think he's going to do anything to help you other than eat you out of house and home. He's not going to help you. These guys are just going to help you. Um, in, in less than an hour, Possel would find there's a moose over here. We saw his tracks earlier. He wanted to go right away, him and Kai. And in less than an hour, he'd be barking that moose right here. It, 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 he'd, be, he'd be right on it. And literally with this kind of terrain, and with him on the, with two of them especially, um, I could walk right up with the bow. And they wouldn't, you know, be no problem. I got a, you wouldn't have any issues. Now, if you had one of those, um, oh, they're basically uh, the, um, they're like a 300, but they're subsonic and they're silent and they got uh, suppressors. And those units are, my fingers snap louder. And so nobody would know anything that you're up here. You could, you could survive here indefinitely if you wanted. There's springs, there's everything you need, and you could survive indefinitely. Now, the other beautiful thing is, one of, the, one of the biggest problems with staying up here is the bears coming in your camp. Well, th this is the original bear dog of all dogs, right? So the bear's not coming in your camp. That was the whole goal of the bear dog to begin with, is so when the guy's out hunting, he's not getting overrun by bears. And that was the whole purpose of the bear dog to begin with. It, it, uh, it morphed a little bit now to, to hunting bear. But quite honestly, when this breed started, the, the old Swedes were up in the bush and they were looking for a moose. 
and they were looking for the winter food supply and doing some logging and trapping and staying in the bush and they didn't want the bear ransacking everything they had and so that's what this dog is the very best at this is the original bear dog and anybody that uh, doesn't know the history of these dogs um, they come out of that Yamthland region this is a Swedish elk on the Yamthund and they come out of that Yamthland region of Sweden and it's one of the highest bear density regions of all and then this this particular line has been raised up all the time up in that Karelian district of Finland and everybody knows the Karelian bear dog well the Karelian bear dog about 1300 years ago is a descendant of these guys right um, you breed one of these to a full Karelian female and you get this exactly like this right uh, they they come right back there's uh, it's just the way it is. Now, the the beauty of having this dog up here with your family, it allows you to to still be in contact with people down below. You can still go into town if you need supplies. You can leave them in the truck. Nobody's stealing your truck. Nobody's breaking a back window. Nobody's coming in. Um, you know, you can you can uh, go in and get your groceries. You pull this guy out and have them stand beside you while you're loading your groceries. Nobody's running up to you. Nobody's accosting you on the side of the street while you're doing your stuff. And uh, I will give you a piece of information if you're getting one of our new pups nowadays. Do not socialize the dog anymore. For this time frame, don't socialize it. My very best dogs have always been the ones that I socialize the least almost with zero social socialization meaning I don't let other people come up to them I don't let other people make friends with them I don't sit down and have uh, 25 people come over and say hello I have other dogs for that I have dogs that are just for meeting and greeting people Paso just happens to be one of those but Paso has his abilities um, I, I have another male, of course, that's, that's considerably different. I raise diff different, that's Ark. But Paso um, is, a, is a very social boy because uh, he was uh, raised in Finland for the first 16 weeks. So I had, it, it was impossible uh, to have him uh, held back because they had to travel through airports, everything. So it was just the way it was. They can smell all the all the scents coming up that ridge from that draw where that moose went, and uh, they can the wind is blowing right at us now. If you're hunting, of course, you just get to this ridge. You, if you know the draws are there, you know the moose are down there. You just come up here, and uh, you can let them go right here if you wanted to. Now. Don't quote me about laws because we're all under global martial law. So whatever regulations you're going to spout, you're talking nonsense. This is survive, and uh, all laws are gone in a in a country that's under global martial law. We're under natural law. That means just look after yourself, be good, don't kill anybody, and try and look after yourself unless they're bad. If they're harming you, do what you got to do. But. Um, no such thing as regulations and this and that that's all nonsense now so right now you got to survive you got to you got to do what you got to do and uh, so you just uh, manage the best you can now this dog you see you get up here on this updraft and he'll catch all that and he'll tell you exactly where they are you can gear up right here and he'll tell you where they are and he's starting to hang with them right in there they're not going far believe me and they'll just hang right in there and you can just sneak right down. It's a piece of cake. It, anybody tells you that uh, it's hard hunting with a, an elk hound just uh, doesn't know dogs. It's not hard to hunt with a dog of this caliber. You don't have to tell him anything. You just got to let him go. He's starting to do it all. This guy, his, his mom is a champion bear hunter. A Finnish champion bear hunter. His dad's a Finnish moose champion. I mean, these are the best of the best. And uh, this is a phenomenal dog. Kai's lineage is all full on hunt all day long. And uh, best of the best, Nordic champs, the whole bit. That litter of possos with Arello over there has Nordic champions in it. And that female, Arella, is Ark's daughter. 
So Ark and Burrell, and they're both out of the very best hunting dogs in the world too. So when you're looking at this and you've got all the things coming at you that you know are coming, you know all the chaos that's coming, you know even stuff that I don't even want to talk about, but you know it's coming. And you're thinking, okay, I'm going to prepare to, to exit stage left. I'm going to get my go bag and get up somewhere. Now, I'll tell you this much. Your fancy overland truck's not going to help you much because they're just going to block the road on you. So you've got to make sure that the area you're going to, you can get to with no roadblock, get to it, and then you got to stay put. And so you pick a zone that you can stay put in because if they block the road on you while well, you're finished, they got you. And so don't, uh, don't think your fancy overland trucks are going to help you a bit. What's going to help you right at this stage of the game when you got to exit is your go bag, how much camp work you've set up, how many supplies you've got hid out, and how good your dog is, and or dogs. Now only a crazy man would come up here with just one dog. Um, you can come with one dog, but if you're serious about this whole thing, which you should be, your life depends on it, bring two. Um, now's the time, right? Like, is there a better time in history to have two dogs? Nope. This is the time to have two dogs and get a matched pair and don't fool around. <laughs> like, I'll tell you what, what if you're stuck up here for a while, you know? And that could be. Um, we, have, we have countries going through absolute total destruction and turmoil in the world, and there's a lot of them. And total government anarchy, governments overthrown, changing governments, bad governments out, good governments in, who knows. Um, but war from other countries, other countries invading, um, immigration policies gone rampant, just crime through the roof, um, and it's just starting to get worse. And so anybody that's ignoring all that is, is headed for disaster. But uh, if you're not ignoring it and you're getting prepared and you're thinking about, okay, what's the most important thing if I am heading out with my go bag? Well, right here, this right here. And honestly, come with two. You watch all the old photos, all the old um, archive stuff from the old boys in the old country, they always ran two dogs, right? Male and female, or two males. They ran them all the time. And uh, just phenomenal set of boys. And it's, uh, you, can, you can do it with one totally fine. There's absolutely no problem. But at the end of the day, right now, uh, two dogs is always going to be better than one, and it's a piece of cake to train, and they are easy to manage, and I like working two dogs so much that, I mean, it's just crazy. I raise more siblings than anybody else in any breeding operation, and uh, placed more siblings, ran more siblings. Um, you know, I've ran with four sisters at a time, stuff like that. You know, I've ran with multiple brothers at a time, triple brothers, all that kind of stuff. I've ran with five generations um, at one time, so, you know, the, the, the real old great-great-great-grandma and down, you know. So, I, I have a good handle on running multiple dogs, and I would always tell everybody now, do the multiple dogs now, don't socialize them. And get them out in the bush right away. Get them up here, get them out, set your camp up, get your camp nice, and just make your camp so that if you got to exit, you come up here, a lot of your stuff's here. And make sure you get your sea salt, you know, make sure you got a lot of good, real high-end sea salt and have that up here. Stash it in different places so you got it. And, you know, you can make fire fire uh, stations at different places so that if you got to adjust your location a little bit, you don't have to go and saw a bunch of wood and two feet of snow. Um, have all the wood cut. All you got to do is make it to the new camp and things like that. Don't waste your time watching movies now. Get up in the bush and set your camp up and have it all set up. Find the hiking trails. Find out where the moose are hanging. Do all your scouting right now. Like as soon as the weather chills, as soon as the freezing happens, boom. 
you, you know where to go. You can just come straight out here. Possum? Who the heck is that? <laughs> that guy, she's a hell of a scout, I'll tell you. She scouts, boy. Yeah, you got to have a ghost in the forest like her. She's fantastic. She's just scouting all the time, checking things out. These guys would know anybody's coming, oh man, a mile away. Yeah, they got hearing and scent like you wouldn't believe. And they'll let you know. Yeah, that's really cool. But I want you to get a hold of us because we got pups from Paso on the ground right now and they're going fast too. But uh, I can get you uh, a pup yet from Paso. I think we got a couple of females left. All the males are already gone. And uh, so there's females that I think I can get you a female. I got a couple people getting back to me. But uh, we got Ark and Varela's litter coming right away too. And females are already getting spoken for out of there. Uh, potentially I can get you a male out of that litter, but you'd have to get a hold of me soon. And we've got uh, um, Aspen's got a litter of Norwegians. And they're going fast too. We got uh, Kaliva's beautiful litter down there. We got, we got pups going out of there right away. You just hang on. You just hang on. And uh, we got one male that uh, the guy has finally decided he can't go with him. So I got a male from Rita. So that male's fantastic. He's ready to go today, like kind of. Uh, the family couldn't take him. They just, uh, some stuff came up. So yeah, that's my uh, video for today. I want to talk, talk more about setting up in the bush, but, uh, and learning how to orient your dog to the zone you're in, and how to keep your dog focused in the area you're in. You want to have your dog geographically connected to where your camps are. And uh, that's easy to do, but it's something that should be done. And that way, they go hunting, they end up back to camp. So uh, I'll show you, I'll tell you how to do that. We'll wrap this baby up.